In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let's acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to each other. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God Glory to in God the highest, highest, and on earth peace, peace to people of goodwill. We praise, we praise you, you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, pour into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Now, Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and may enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. In your observance of the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I enjoin upon you, you shall not add to what I command you, nor subtract from it. Observe them carefully, for thus will you give evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations, who will hear of all these statutes and say, This great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has God so close to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as this whole law which I am setting before you today, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Justice will live in the presence. 
presence of the Lord, the one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Whoever walks blamelessly and does justice, who thinks the truth in his heart and slanders not with his tongue. The one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Who lends not his money at usury and accepts no bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never be disturbed. The one who does justice will live in the presence of the Second reading is from the letter of St. James. Dearest brothers and sisters, all good giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no alteration or shadow caused by change. He willed us to give birth by the word of truth that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deluding yourselves. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Pharisees, with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem, gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do, not eat any, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him, 
Why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, Well, did they say I prophesy, you, prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written? This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandment, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person, but the things that come out from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evil come from within, and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. In the movie, uh, Thank You for Smoking, Aaron Eckhart plays a tobacco lobbyist and spokesperson. And in one scene of the movie, he's trying to explain to his son what he does and how he handles situations like TV debate shows. And he says that his job is to always be right. And that he does it by not arguing for a case, but rather by working to prove by his argument that the person he's debating against is wrong. And therefore, since he's debating against him, he must be right. And even though that movie has come out 16 years ago, that situation has felt, continues to feel very real. And in fact, I think it's become even more true now because now that's not just true of lobbyists on TV, but it seems like that's the way that all debates are happening on TV and on the internet and pretty much everywhere else. You have this sense that people come in with a debating position and just look for an opportunity to get a sound bite which they can put on YouTube as, you know, this person destroys the opposition. And this leads to a culture that's very divided and where everybody focuses on trying to win for their side. And there's no sense of trying to find what is true what is good, something that we can all agree on that will make the situation actually better. And that can be so very destructive. And we see that that's not a entirely modern phenomenon, even in our gospel passage. We see the Pharisees come in, they've just traveled a long distance. Uh, they, went from Jerusalem to where Jesus is, is teaching, and they did that entire distance on foot or on horse or, or donkey back. That's a long trip. And they did that just to immediately look around and say, what's wrong with these people? Why are they this way? You must be bad because your disciples don't follow all the rules that we think they should be following. They didn't start by listening to him speak. They didn't want to find out what it is that he's teaching. They did not come to share some sort of news with them, with him. They came to see and look for some opportunity to dismiss him and whatever he might be saying without even hearing it out. How different is God's 
approach and God's invitation for us. After all, when the Lord gives his law, it's not a set of ideas that he demands that we follow for his sake. He offers us opportunities to understand what is truly good. And when Jesus approaches people, he always comes with this position of seeing their situation, listening for what they are searching for, who they are, what they want, what they believe. And he always starts to bring them up to the next step, to love, to recognize God's mercy and their need for that mercy. He isn't trying to fight and destroy the opposition. He's trying to help people become better, help the world to be a little bit brighter and more merciful and more kind, and more loving. He's inviting us to the very same thing. Let us make sure that we are not people who are fighting for an ideological position, not deciding that something is our side and therefore we need to find ways to discredit anyone who might disagree about anything. But rather, let's approach our interactions with each other as people who are humbly ready to listen to who the other person is, what their experience has been, and where they are searching for what is good and true. And then being willing to share of ourselves what we believe, why we believe it, what we are hoping to accomplish, where we see the problems and potential solutions. So that by sharing with each other, we may search for what is good, what is true, what will actually bring about some sort of agreement and process of moving forward. We are famously divided, divided politically, divided socially, even divided in our entertainment with people being either for DC Comics or for Marvel Comics or all sorts of other things. But we're not called to be warriors for some group. We're called to be followers of Christ. And our goal should never be to destroy those who we think are wrong, but to share what is true build up what is good and help all people experience God's love, God's mercy, and the benefits he wants to pour down upon all people to bring about his kingdom of love and peace and justice. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who of the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's presence among us and his great love, we turn to him with confidence, bringing forward all of our needs and petitions. that the church grow in unity and remember Christ's call to love and serve one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That lawgivers ensure just laws and equitable taxes, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For students returning to school, that they always be filled with the excitement of learning, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the farmers and ranchers who feed the world reap a bountiful husband harvest and share it with the poor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That all who gather here will find strength and support in this caring and loving community of believers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us remember in prayer the souls of the recently departed, including David Hansen, David Pierce, Teresa Burgess, and all those who have been affected by the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And let us pray for David Drew, Robert LaRosa, Mary M. Burke, Christine M. O'Neill, Vincent Eddy, Francis and Catherine O'Meara, Elizabeth Ann Sheehan Morano, and Frank Morano celebrating his 100th birthday this month, and all parishioners of St. Bridget and Holy Ghost for whom this Mass is offered today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Lord God, we thank you for hearing us and for all the ways you bless us each day. We ask you to open our hearts more fully to your love and to be guided by it in all we do. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, o Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the, kingdom, the power, the and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Soft each other, the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the words, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Sent forth by God's blessing, a true faith confessing, the people of God from his dwelling take leave. God sacrifice ended, oh now be extinct.
extended the fruits of this Mass in all hearts who believe. The seed of Christ's teaching, our inner souls reaching, shall blossom in action for God and for all. His grace shall incite us, his love shall unite us to further God's kingdom and answer his call.